people today, there are still many people who do not know yet what gravity is, including many scientists. Either they do not understand it or will not understand it. But the universe and God is as comprehensible as simple mathematics. If we look at mathematics in, in another way, we can clearly see why mathematics and logic demands balance. A healthy mind is a balanced mind, and balance, harmony, and humility are all the same thing. For we are indeed humble the more we probe into the mysteries of the universe. For as we unravel these mysteries, we see how there is harmony everywhere we look, and we eventually end up right back where we started, our own selves. We can look at mathematics as a scale. What is on one side of the scale must equal or balance with the other side. Therefore, the fulcrum of the scale can be looked at as the equal sign in a mathematical equation. When the Greeks began their quest into logic, they surmised that all physical matter must be made out of a basic elementary physical particle. They called this particle atomos. The word that we use today is derived from this word. It is known as the atom. During the earlier part of this century, however, we've discovered that the basic elementary particle is not the atom as was previously supposed. We've discovered even smaller particles called subatomic particles today. One in particular is called the electron. It is the particle in the atom that carries the negative charge. But the electron we've learned later is not exactly a particle and it's not physical. It's more like a blip or a wave in the ocean. A little later we will learn what this ocean is. There is another particle in the atom called a proton. It carries the positive charge. The proton lies in the atom's center, like the sun lies in the center of the solar system. The electron spins around the proton like the planet spins around the sun, but not in the same fashion. To describe this as best as possible, the farther away from the sun a planet is, the longer it will take that planet to make one complete revolution. For example, it takes 88 days for Mercury to revolve around the sun once. Everything in the universe spins around everything else. There is constant motion everywhere we look. This is energy. All physical matter is made up of atoms. One electron and one proton forms an atom of hydrogen, the first element in the chemical periodic table. The second element is helium. It has two electrons and two protons. The third is lithium. It has three of each, and so forth. Because the electron is so small, imagine a speck of dust compared to the size of the Earth. The electron in comparison to the speck of dust is as the speck of dust to the Earth. Its spin around the proton is very near the speed of light. In order for it to avoid crashing into the proton, it is necessary to, for it to spin at that speed. If it falls into the proton, then something else happens that the inquiring mind can probe and do further research if one must know. This particular event is not pertinent to our discussion. This is what is meant by balance. So in order for physical matter to exist, it is necessary that there is an opposite charge in the atom and that the electrons spin around the proton as fast as it does. This creates the cohesion and balance necessary for physical matter to subsist. Gravity, on the other hand, is the concentration of energy on a massive scale. Einstein described gravity using the analogy of a rubber sheet. If we place a metal ball on this sheet, it will cause a depression. Taking another lighter metal ball then, and forcing it to spin around this depression causes the lighter ball to orbit the heavier one 
unless of course it decreases in energy and falls into the heavier one. In this analogy, the rubber sheet can be compared to the electromagnetic field, or the pure energy field, or in other words, the ocean of empty space, of which the beam of light from our flashlight discussed earlier is. The heavier metal ball can be compared to the earth or the sun. The lighter metal ball can be compared to the moon or the planets, depending on which object you were observing at a particular given time. Concentrated energy on a massive scale, therefore, creates the effects in space we call gravity. From all of the evidence discussed above, I have concluded that E, in Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, is pure thought. And the M is the manifestation of that thought. To, com to complete the equation, c squared is merely the amount of energy E per unit mass M. Mass, or matter, therefore, is simply the concentration of energy. And concentration, looked at in another way, can simply be referred to desire. The greater the desire, the greater the concentration. And the greater the concentration, the more likely your thoughts will materialize. For nothing that man has created was created without his concentrated thought patterns. Therefore, we are surrounded by the events, circumstances, and people that we have each chosen to be surrounded by. To eliminate any confusion, the difference between reality and illusion is that reality is founded on structure. Illusion has no structure. In other words, reality is the concentration again of energy. Illusion is energy that is not concentrated. For example, if we concentrate on our fears by thinking about them so much, they will materialize. They will be real to us individually. I refer briefly to the Native Americans and the island peoples. Is there a relationship to the way they lived long ago and the absence of disease and problems so common in today's world? Is it because that they always knew what science has barely discovered? That there is harmony in the universe? This is essentially another way to explain Einstein's special theory of relativity. His general theory of relativity, described in this similar manner, is not much different. It is a collective concentrated effort. It is another way to describe God with the capital G. To put it in another way, all matter is what it is by its own inherent nature. It intrinsically chose to be what it is. In another way, the physical universe is a cooperative collective effort. It is literally the mind of God. To describe it further, when God or the universe saw that all things was in order and of equal intensity and focus, physical matter gradually and slowly materialized, as if from a dream as it were, until its density and structure were equal to its concentrated thought patterns, or in other words, its desire. Consequently, God must be pure energy. If he appears to a man in the flesh, it will be because of that man's concentrated perception of him. For the trees sees God as a tree, the animals as an animal. This stands to reason that the more that, that people are one in heart and mind, the more likely that God will be with them because the greater the energy will be. Behold, this I have given unto you as a parable, and it is even as I am. I say unto you, Be one, and if ye are not one, ye are not mine. Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verse 27. The merge.